So we're fine. Everybody's okay? Yes. Great. Uh, let's welcome our fourth speaker, Erfan. He's working in an interesting area, algorithms, right? <laughs> and I believe it would be something new and exciting. Yes, uh, hello everybody, I'm Erfan. Uh, I'm doing my master's department uh, starting from 2011. I did my undergrad at Chelsea University, and I'm working with Funda, uh, Dr. Erkin, uh, in Random as Algorithm Lab, the lab next door. Uh, yes. So because my research is uh, part of big data, to its applications is always uh, uh, motivations is for big data, I'll talk about big data briefly. So as you notice, we uh, in daily work, uh, at every minute or second, we are making a lot of data. For example, now uh, we are recording our uh, video or for managing this uh, event, people exchange a lot of emails. Then, uh, no, for buying stuff, we had a lot of transa and, uh, transactions. Uh, so people are recording all of them, storing all of them to uh, process it later. So we have, uh, we are making a huge amount of data, and we, we are not getting uh, rid of them, and we are storing all of them. Which, uh, which. Uh, provides, uh, leaves us with uh, big databases, uh, and then our memories, our uh, random access memories, uh, working memories, are not following Moore's law. As you know, Moore's law is for uh, computation hardware, and its speed and uh, power that is growing exponentially. But unfortunately, our data growing uh, faster than Moore's law, but memory uh, is growing less than Moore's law. So to give numbers about uh, uh, the, data, the data growth, for in YouTube, the, uh, in each minute, uh, there is 48 hours that people uh, upload it in YouTube. Then, uh, Almost 600 uh, websites are being built every minute. And uh, for Facebook, uh, each day, uh, 100 terabytes are being uploaded. Uh, and people are expecting an exponential growth in just uh, speed of making these uh, data. So in 2020, there will be 44 times uh, faster uh, data production uh, than it, it was in 2009. So every uh, um, small databases now become you know, massive databases. For example, the uh, Library of Congress now has 20 terabyte uh, Text, just text data. Uh, Amazon for its uh, user information, their addresses, phone number, and receipts, and all these transactions, they have 42 terabytes. Uh, YouTube, even uh, observatories, laboratories, their own uh, databases are uh, now very big. AT&T for its phone calls and recording the information and uh, the conversation. Uh, it became uh, almost, yeah, more than 300 terabytes. But we have even bigger ones. So Yahoo is two petabytes. So you might now be, uh, think that, to remind you what is terabytes, if it were. So I was talking about terabytes. 
per year. So after gigabyte, terabyte, then petabyte is 10 to the power of 15 bytes. Then exabyte, and I will talk about zettabytes too. So we will need more and more of these units uh, in some years. <coughs> we, we all will see that uh, this table is not enough at all. So uh, for this climate and the weather forecast, we have six petabyte petabytes. For the things that even we don't uh, consider them uh, collider, just one collider, uh, from uh, each year makes 15 petabytes. And now the estimation for uh, our di digital universe is 2.7 zettabytes. Wow. Uh, these big data are in one hand. In other hand, if you go to classic uh, algorithm books, we have tools like dynamic programming, linear programming or uh, minimum span theory, scrambling scaling problem, DFS, DFS, network load. All, in all of them, we have this uh, trivial lower bundle that they cannot be better than linear. They cannot run, uh, they need linear time at least, linear in size of input. They need memory, uh, we at least need to read them and have them in memory. But with, uh, for this big data, None of them will work. None of these algorithms will allow us to process them. So we see a, a huge need to have a new algorithms for these. So this big data has a different uh, branch and uh, aspects that in different uh, labs our friends are working on them, but. We do in, uh, we work in theoretical part of uh, aspects of big data. For, uh, in, in this field, in uh, algorithm field, people uh, classify these algorithms uh, regarding the resource that is uh, our bottleneck. So we can be uh, out of time, memory, communication, and each one uh, makes a new field. So for time, uh, which is, uh, so when people say sublinear algorithm, they, uh, they are meaning sublinear time algorithm, which we have a basic uh, question, a basic problem to solve. For example, uh, we have a huge uh, uh, sequence of data, numbers, for example. Then we want to find one element that is bigger than median of these numbers. So, so again, we have trivial lower bound that we at least need to read all of them, or at least half of them. We need to read half of them to find one number to, to make sure that this number is bigger than the half. But uh, for the same reasons of this being big data. Uh, we have a solution uh, using randomization. We can find, we can report one element in constant time. Uh, I wanted to explain how, but uh, I think the time doesn't allow us to do. At the end, if you wanted, I will explain what is the idea of uh, a randomized algorithm that allows us to find, to, to solve this problem in constant time. But for uh, different problems, classic problems, uh, there is works have been done in sublinear time. So the uh, first graph problem was uh, ex uh, estimating average degree, uh, which uh, gave idea for other problems. Uh, currently in our lab, uh, minimum spanning tree is being worked in uh, some in time settings. And uh, for traveling salesman problem, uh, I and Frederick working together uh, on this problem too, which is uh, closely related to past cover. Then uh, 
another, another part of this uh, field is about lower bounds to prove that, for example, if, if even though if you allow to have randomization and approximation, this problem cannot be solved in sublinear time. For some problems are has uh, that much uh, level of hardness. With those lower bounds, we see that uh, we need more relaxation of problems. So uh, there was this property testing, which uh, my supervisor Funda worked uh, uh, in her postdoc time. Uh, in this uh, kind of uh, setting, we allow three kind of uh, error relaxation. There can be uh, failure probability, low failure probability, approximation ratio, and a gap for uh, uh, to to distinguish. So basically, it is uh, to test if an object has a property or it is uh, far from having this property. I'll give an example. Uh, so suppose that our input is the uh, array of input, a sequence of numbers. We want to see if it is sorted or there is uh, at least logarithmic number of inversions in it. So for sorted, we want to yeah, find if it is sorted or not. If it is far from being sorted, we want to find it too. But if it is something in between, we don't uh, care about answer. This is, uh, so th this is the gap that uh, third kind of uh, relaxation. So for these settings, uh, which, which again just has applications in big data, uh, there is some uh, interesting works have been. So second resource which can be uh, uh, bottleneck is memory. So these big data in for in banking transactions and etc. are uh, stored in uh, tape, magnetic tapes, or uh, hard drives, or whatever, that we don't have random access to them. So for magnetic tapes, we can read it once, we can go one pass through it, and uh, process it. But we cannot load it to a random access memory to uh, do what we want. So these settings are uh, called streaming algorithms, uh, and uh, Basically, the definition is that we have sublinear space, and we have, and the elements of the system are being uh, given to the algorithm, and he wants to compute something. We have another quantity in the streaming algorithms: the number of passes that we, we do on the stream. In some applications, uh, there is no way to do second pass because they are losing the data. In some of them. For example, in bank transactions, we can do uh, other passes on the uh, So one point that I want to make it clear, the streaming of <coughs> video is different than video streaming. Because every anyone that asks me what are you doing on SA streaming algorithm, he starts to talk about video, but it is not. It has applications in video streaming, but it has uh, the same uh, amount of application that has in other field. Um, so if you were, are interested, you can uh, see that some of algorithms uh, before time of streaming was, was a streaming in its nature. For example, computing maximum of a stream doesn't need to have random access to the end group. But, uh, but it's, it's not much. Most of our algorithms are uh, essential. Uh, it's it's the fundamental to have random access. So first problems that were discussed in these settings were distinct number of distinct elements. So yeah, to see, for example, how many different IPs are going from this router. Uh, heavy heaters is basically frequency of the frequent element. We want to see. Uh, like we want to find k uh, elements that are uh, occurred more than others, and uh, to estimate into uh, other functions, other functions like entropy or frequency moments that has application in statistics. Um, 
So streaming algorithms on streams uh, started recently by Catherine mentioned or something that has application in bioinformatics. So in our lab, I am again with uh, Funda and Petra. We are working on uh, square detection and uh, finding palindromic substring in streams, which is uh, the palindrome is almost done. So the last uh, uh, bottleneck in, uh, in for big data is communication. Yeah. Um, we can't compute anything I inside the node, but we don't want to have uh, communications between them. For communication complexity, uh, uh, before me, yeah, uh, uh, my supervisor, other student, and Gabriel Tyler's other student, they work in this field. Then there is distributed computation uh, for big data that uh, in our lab, uh, Yang Fang is doing uh, things about MapReduce programming model, and Hoda is doing uh, lo load balancing for uh, for improving the efficiency of distributed computation. Also, wireless sensor networks is uh, uh, text cares about communication too. So yeah. So as conclusion, uh, now you know oh, what is theoretical aspects of big data that to be cared. So basically just to remind you that there is uh, different resources and we always uh, want to uh, decrease or use uh, these resources in an optimal way, even if we really want to have error or uh, gap in our computation. Okay, thank you. So I think it was one question. And I would like to have a question from the audience. Yes, for them? So in your last slide, you listed um, some buttons, and among them were time and computation, how and different computation. So for computation, it is uh, about uh, this distributed settings which, for example, in a uh, MapReduce system. So computation is about like uh, cloud computing stuff that uh, uh, mm, so we have this algorithm to compute for big data, but uh, if we do it sequentially, our time will be bad. So for uh, this one, we say that uh, we want more nodes compute simultaneously which is uh, which is the resource uh, that leads us to this uh, uh, grid computing or cloud computing or MapReduce systems but in the time one we don't read the input uh, the parts of input that we don't want so it is for that part of uh, I don't hear it. But so time in um, when you look at time, you you're looking at sublinear algorithms and in computation you have the uh, parallel parallelism. Yeah, in computation. Uh, computation, we mean the part we have, uh, like CPU computation power that we have. There are, uh, we want to optimally use them. But in time, it is, we don't care about this uh, hardware. We just say that, okay, we, d we don't even read the parts of it. Okay, so let's thank our speaker. <laughs> and uh, let's welcome our next speaker. Thank you.